Overtake My Heart by Anita Driver. What caught her attention the most was his neck. A thick, with two C's, muscular testament to the physical demands of being a Formula One driver. Each tendon and muscle stood out, giving him an air of raw strength and endurance that was captivating. Emily found herself drawn to the sight, her heart beating faster as she imagined what it would feel like to touch that thick, powerful neck. No other neck could compare. They say a man is 75% water, but not Daniel. He was 75% neck. Welcome to Fiends, where the F1 never ends, just like the depravity of Formula One fans. Daniel Ricciardo is more than just a Formula One driver. He's a proper celebrity. Thanks to Netflix's docu-series Drive to Survive, he became America's darling seemingly overnight. But there's a darker side to this kind of fame. Well, maybe not darker, but definitely hornier. There's a subreddit called Fanfic, which is, well, Formula One-inspired erotic friend fiction. I initially learned about this part of the F1 community in the very early days of this YouTube channel, when I made a video ranking the F1 drivers based on how upset I'd be if they banged my girlfriend. Suddenly out of nowhere one day, that video started getting views, and when I looked into it, it turns out it had been posted in that subreddit. Not gonna lie, fanfic isn't for me, but they're not harming anyone, so whatever. Have fun writing your thirsty fiction. It's not like any of it's getting published anyway. Hold that thought. Fast forward to this past Christmas, and someone posts in my F1 group chat that her husband had bought her the perfect stocking stuffers, and shares a photo of two real, actual, physical books, which happen to be Daniel Ricardo romance novels. At first I thought, they must be a joke. And to be honest, the more I learned about them, the more I realized, they are. But the thing is, as far as a joke is concerned, they're actually a quite complete product. I was thinking it would be a notebook or agenda with a joke image on the cover, but to my surprise, they're actually full length, 100% written and published paperback novels. They're consistent with the style of the kind of steamy romance novels that would be for sale at the one store in a beach town. I'm not one to read romance novels, not because I'm against smut, but because I pretty much never read fiction. Now, before you go accusing me of being a mouth breather who doesn't read, you should know, my eyes don't follow lines very well, so I have to read at a speaking pace. So finishing a book is very time consuming. And also, I spend most of my free time making these YouTube videos that nobody watches, which is a bigger indication of my lack of intelligence than my reading pace. And for that reason, later on, I'm going to bring in someone who does read romance novels to let you know their opinion. But once I found out about these books, I couldn't not read them. But in order to read them, I'd have to buy them. And that's where this journey truly begins. I went on Amazon because there's still a bookstore, right? I'm old enough, I still remember Amazon for being a bookstore. Um, so where was I? Right, so I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. So I found the book and decided to check out everything else the author had for sale. That was when I got my first inkling that this was satire. The author's name was Anita Driver. More importantly, and excitingly, I found out they had a lot more than just a couple thick Rick books for sale. There's a Lance Stroll fire safety book, a sad one about Leclerc, and most recently, one called Oh the Races You'll Blow, the tragic tale of Lewis Hamilton's move to Ferrari. If you think I should review one of those books next, let me know in the comments which one you'd like to see. Rather than buy them all, I just picked up the two Danny Rick books, and that's where this journey really kicks into high gear. She needed Daniel in her life. She needed that neck in her life. She craved him the way a dingo farmer craves a cold foster's beer on a hot, sweaty Northern Territory day. She needed him the way Nikita Mazepin needed his dad's money to get an F1 seat. But he seemed like a faraway dream. Let's start with the first one in the series, Overtake My Heart. I'm not going to spoil the story. The book is far too short and the plot is far too simple for me to say anything without giving it all away. But I will say, the plot feels like your typical Hallmark movie, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was lifted right out of one. The thing is though, you're not here for the plot, and the author knows this and really hams it up. The book is full of funny references, and since it is set in a completely fictional universe that supposedly has no relation to actual reality, they really take some liberties for the sake of comedy, and any F1 fan will truly appreciate the depth of the humor in these books. Read passage about Max and Danny, not now. She walked back into the hotel and took the elevator up to Daniel's floor. Standing in front of his door, she felt a mix of fear and anticipation. 
Without knocking, she opened the door to Daniel's room. Not now, Mix. I'm not in the mood tonight, said Daniel, before looking up from his phone. Oh, Emily, is everything all right? He said, realizing his mistake. Yes, she said, her voice steady. I just realized I wasn't ready for the night to end. I will say, though, these books are becoming dated fast. The first book touches on Danny Rick's struggles at McLaren, for example, and also makes a lot of jokes at the expense of Nikita Mazepin, a driver we would all like to forget was ever on the grid. You really need to have followed Formula One during the time in which each book was written to get all of the references. But even if you weren't, you will still enjoy all of the overt humor contained within the narrative. Emily had unlocked something in him, something that was making him view the race in a different light. Maybe today was the day he would finally best his teammate, two-time world champion Nicholas Latifi. To be clear, I have no prior experience reading romance novels, so I have no idea if they're usually more graphic, but these books do not cross that line. George R.R. R. Martin is much more graphic, to give you an idea of where they stand. The Thick Rick books are hardly even steamy, if I'm being honest. Even the moments where I imagine they would normally describe a man's chest or arms in these books, they describe his neck. Oh my god, do they ever describe his neck in such fine detail. His neck was a symphony of strength and endurance, a testament to his unwavering determination and willpower. It was a part of him that spoke volumes about the man he was strong, resolute, and infinitely captivating. His neck had to be a sky cue or sky glass customer with the way it pushed her red button in just the right way. The first book was a struggle to read, even though it was only 40 pages. And the second one was no better. This book, in fact, makes the whole format feel tired already. The jokes were all of similar formats, so even if they were just as well executed as they were in the first one, they didn't hit quite so hard, and I didn't laugh out loud even once, but I did exhale sharply through my nose a few times. For both books, I read them in stints of about 15 to 17 pages before I wanted to do absolutely anything else. I get the impression that the proper way to read these books is ironically, but that does still mean having to read a poorly written book. When I was finally done reading them both and had time to reflect, I couldn't help but wonder what the author was like. Lucky for me, they have contact info in the back of the book. So I reached out, pouring the questions from my head directly into the email. Subject, I have to know. Why Danny Rick? Why not someone else? Like Seb, any other drivers planned for the future? What inspired you to start doing these? Are you a man? I'm a man with a woman's name, Stacy. So people just assume I'm a girl, but I'm not. I need to know. I need to know. A day went by with no reply, and I felt myself feeling forlorn. But then, 41 hours hence, I found a letter within my mailbox. Answers in bold. Why Danny Rick? Why not someone else? Like Seb. It's that neck, obviously. Any other drivers planned for the future? I've already written books about Lewis, Lance, and Charles, but those are less erotic children's books. You can see them all on Amazon, and keep an eye out for a few surprises in the coming months. What inspired you to start doing these? When it became apparent Daniel wouldn't be on the grid in 2023, I saw the awful place his fans were in. They were distraught. They were in despair. I knew I wanted to help. It was obvious that there was only one way to reach these poor souls. Write an erotic novel where their hero is still winning races and hearts. And finally, are you a man? Anita Driver is an idea that transcends space, time, and gender. There was a reason I asked this. Anita Driver is very obviously a pseudonym. A pseudonym is a name that an author uses that isn't their legal name. Pseudonyms are quite common in literature, sometimes to maintain privacy, sometimes because they think a different name is more marketable, and sometimes because they think a book takes on a different tone if written by a person of a specific gender. In the case of these romance novels, the author very clearly intends for it to be written by a woman possibly to make men more interested, but if I'm being honest, they read like a romance novel written by a man who doesn't actually read romance novels and is doing a parody of what they think they're like. To be fair, I am a man who doesn't actually read romance novels, so I'm not complaining. In fact, they're written exactly the way I would have written them if I were the one penning these books. And I didn't want this review to be entirely from a place of ignorance, so I brought in my friend Emily, a woman who actually does read romance novels to give her review of the book. 
I am a huge fan of both F1 and romance novels. I spend my summertime with my nose buried in the spiciest romance books I can possibly find. So you can imagine my excitement when Stacey handed me a copy of Overtake My Heart by Anita Driver. So like everyone in the world with eyeballs, I obviously have a huge crush on Danny Rick. And when I opened the book, my jaw hit the floor because on the first page, our beautiful, talented, F1-obsessed protagonist is named Emily. That really added to my enjoyment of the book overall. But for those of you who aren't lucky enough to be called Emily, I still think if you're an F1 fan, you're going to absolutely love this book. For those of you who have read romance novels a lot, like I have, you know that there's a certain level of self-awareness in the writing that really good romance novel writers possess. And I did not open this book expecting that I would be blown away by the writing, but I have to hand it to Anita Driver. It was really well done. I really enjoyed it. It's such a quick story, only 41 pages, but Anita Driver did a great job of pulling me in right away. I was immediately obsessed with the characters, even though I already knew who Danny Rick was. She did a really great job of exploring those characters and opening it up in a quick, fast-paced way that drew me right into the story. She did a great job of the usual tropes of romance novels, but those aside, I was laughing out loud throughout reading the book. I'm not kidding laughing out loud at my kitchen table. There were a ton of really great F1 jokes. Some of them cut deep and some of them were a little more superficial. So even if you've only watched a little bit of F1 or you've never even watched a race, but you're familiar with Drive to Survive, you'll definitely giggle when you read this book. The best part, in my opinion, were the footnotes. Anita Driver made really great use of footnotes throughout the whole entire story and use them to capture really funny pieces of information that otherwise would have made the story feel a little bit choppy. She did it expertly, to the point where I almost wonder if this is someone who's familiar with footnotes outside of their fiction writing. Maybe a lawyer? Who knows? Of course, like any romance reader, I definitely flip more than once to the good parts. You know what I mean. And like any romance novel, Anita Driver did a great job of inserting all the passion and the throbbing and everything like that, but also managed to combine it with some really cool F1 references that made me laugh but also didn't pull me out of the magic of the moment about the anticipation of race day. Think combining the classic caressing and passion, but with the anticipation of race day and the synchronized dance of a well-executed pit stop. Very, very hilarious, but also sexy. Pretty much everything that I would want if I was in bed with an F1 legend. If you're like me and you love romance with a really good story, a lot of humor, and more than your fair share of puns, I cannot recommend this book enough. It doesn't take long to read, but if you've got some time, spend a couple hours with Anita Driver and find out what it's like for Emily to fall in love with Danny Rick. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. And I wanted you to hear Emily's conclusions before I give mine, because I think it's important to keep in mind that two people can consume the same piece of entertainment and come out of it with completely different opinions. And that's almost certainly due to our different lived experiences, as well as having a different level of understanding and experience with the thing that we're consuming. In conclusion, if you're the kind of person who could read something this length in like an hour or two, I'd say go for it. But honestly, for how much they cost, the entertainment value just doesn't seem there. I think they're best suited as a funny gift for a fellow F1 fan. Ideally, the type of person who, in Danny's darkest days, said they would give up on their marriage before they gave up on Danny Rick. And if you have a little more budget to blow, add in another book to make the joke land a little harder. And if you're just sitting here lovelorn for Daniel Ricardo, why don't you watch this video next? It's a song I made about what it's like being a Honey Badger fan in 2024.